into politics in the world. There's a swaying to and fro. There's a new left wing and right wing, it seems. And we've just had the announcements only last week of the election of a right wing government in Italy with the new Prime Minister, Giorgia Maloney, having won the election. She will be the country's first woman Prime Minister, one day. But also her party has roots sort of in, the, in fascism of the past, which is often regarded as right-wing. These days people refer to fascism, fascism as right-wing. I find that a bit strange, Beryl, because fascism, I thought, was a sort of like a, a cousin of communism, so very yes. left-wing, just to give a very simple change that would be. Within communism, you would expect the government to own industry. Yes. State ownership of the means of production. Government would own industry. In fascism, you would expect private citizens to own the industry, but they'd be told what to do with it by the government. So the government mm -hmm. tells you what to do. The government is in charge of industry, but it's privately owned. But in communism, it's actually owned by the government. That's both left-wing policy. Yes. And so it, it just seems a bit odd. What people tend to mean by fascism being right-wing, they don't mean right-wing, they mean authoritarian. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and authoritarian, yes, I can see that fascism would be author authoritarian. But is that right-wing? Most people think of right-wing. Let me say, I think of right-wing. I know that it stems from position of people sat in Parliament in Paris uh, during the the time of the revolution and stuff so it comes from a particular place but generally it's thought of as uh, conservatives so trying to uh, conserve the main institutions that's what i'm trying to think of yes yeah they try and preserve the traditional institution and preserve the status of the country but within that there's freedom so you would have strong police strong enforcement of for example contracts and this sort of thing strong law and then strong borders and protection of the borders so a strong army that would be right wing a uh, left wing would be well state controls how um, the uh, how the economy runs State controls everything. Yeah, state controls, yeah, yeah. It, it ends up with state controlling everything. So there's not an emphasis on keeping the current institutions and uh, and given keeping them strong. It's rather they're replaced by just running everything through the state. So it's it's a very different attitude. But now a uh, right wing seems to be people I don't like. Yes, <laughs> people you don't like. No, no, people that the critics don't like. These days, I see right wing as a compliment. Yes, I do too. I must admit, in this last week, we've had the Labour Party conference and to hear them talk, you'd think that there's no point in having any ambition or entrepreneurship or thinking for oneself. Everything has to be level. You do it exactly as your neighbour does. I understand where you're coming from there, but you're, you're contrasting, I believe, the sort of socialist worldview of the of the Labour Party, where it's like um, everyone has to be equal, there has to be equality of outcome, whereas mm. a right-wing approach would be equality of opportunity, and then you expect there to be different results, because different mm -hmm. people have different qualities about them, of different abilities. Yes, Absolutely, because everybody is different. You cannot make everybody exactly the same. And God never intended it that way. Yeah, I think that's the important. For me, I would say I don't have that much money because I'm terrible at making money. You know, I don't I'm not blame people for it. I'm just terrible with money. So I never have very much. But other people are brilliant at it and have lots of money. Great. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't be an issue. It becomes an issue when you're thinking about policies for the country with taxation, etc. Mm -hmm. If you think it's the state's job to do everything, yes, and that's when you need huge amounts of tax. And then when there are tax cuts, you, well, nobody think of the children or the single mothers. When, yeah, we are thinking of them. The children can be with their families. And um, if you stop interfering, they can actually educate them as well. And thinking about single mothers, well, if you uh, make it so that mothers don't need to go, don't need to, go to work, then they can uh, spend time with their children. And how do you do that? Well, you, instead of having state support for having children, encouraging single motherhood, you encourage people to get married and to stay together. Uh, these policies are absent these days. And they've become left-wing policies, much to my surprise, where they're a sort of progressive, I would say deviant, deviant from the traditional way of doing things, uh, policies. That's become part of left-wing 
So right wing has become the natural home. This is what I'm building up to asking you from what you just said, bro. It's become the natural home for Christians. Yes, it does seem to be that way, although I do see a lot of Christians also attaching themselves to the Labour Party, and yes. I'm not quite quite sure why. Yeah, it, it, it just seems strange to me, yeah. Let's take the extreme. You've got a communist, a complete communist state. Mm. That is seen as, uh, if you're a Christian supporting it, I've heard this supported by, by various people. Uh, you know, I don't have someone to quote. But I'm just going to put this argument now. Could be a straw man argument, maybe this is making it up. But this is what I hear them saying. I hear them saying that uh, Jesus would have approved of communism because he loves everyone. And when we read about, in the book of Acts, the early church being set up, they all pool their resources and everyone is given, ha- as, given, they is given as they have need rather than uh, what they've earned. And so, therefore, it must be that this is how Jesus wanted us to live. Well, Do also you- take the parable of the Good Samaritan, mm. for example, that Jesus didn't pass by the poor man on the road who'd been mm. beaten and deprived and his body was broken. He picked him up, took him to the nearest inn and asked the innkeeper to look after him and gave him money to be able to do that yes so okay that could be like um social security uh, or or, um uh, some sort of um, benefit to help him in his time of need this is the way that it's portrayed i don't agree with Mm. it i don't think you either we're just saying that that that's that's how it's portrayed uh. let's make this straight i do agree with what jesus did because oh, jesus yeah. is always right he does things from the right motive <laughs> but in supporting everybody who is poor and needy you have to ask why are they poor and yes. needy yeah true it's interesting that uh, there is something missing it's like a, a deception in that interpretation of of christianity so before we take any further i just want to remind listeners just get in touch with the show leave a comment below the show if you go to beryl and pete.com then you will find uh, you can make leave a comment uh, under the show as a place to leave comments you do need to subscribe to, uh, to leave comments but apart from that it's no, oh, it's just pretty straightforward. Just leave a comment, beryllandpete.com, or you can get in touch with the show via the station, flameccr at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, so just going back to this reading of the Bible as being almost like a communist manifesto, we're reflecting here on the fact that uh, it looks like there's a rise in right-wing politics, which is seen as a bad thing, but we mm-hmm. actually regard it as a good thing <laughs> on the show. So are they mistaken? You know, Is it, in fact, as we believe, that Christian's natural home is in the right wing? Well, yeah, I still stand by that. Uh, I'll just take one of them, Beryl. I would say in the New Testament, it's in the church in Jerusalem. The believers sold all their possessions and shared them this is from acts chapter 4 verse 32 all the believers were one in heart and mind no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own but they shared everything they had it goes on to talk about what they got up to with um, uh, miracles and stuff but it's highlighted how it was done later Mm. because a man named ananias wife sapphira sold a piece of property and then kept back part of the money yes and they brought the rest and put it at the apostles feet and they're confronted saying you didn't have to do this this is peter and it says specifically you have lied to the holy spirit then presumably peter is saying he's speaking you know the holy spirit he's giving him words to say Uh, he's responding to them lying to the holy spirit about the money for that you received for the land didn't the land belong to you before it was sold and after it was sold wasn't the money at your disposal Mm -hmm. it wasn't that they hadn't given them all the money it was the fact that they pretended that they had given all the money. Yes, so uh, that so was it, a lie and a it, hypocrisy. It, it was the lying that was the wrong. It was deception. Mm. The name Satan means deception. They were deceiving. They didn't need to do that, and they, of course, dropped down dead. Uh, Peter didn't touch them. They just dropped down dead. Out of shame? Was it the Holy Spirit? That's sort of outside of our discussion here. The point is that it was all voluntary. Yes, that's not communism. That's not no. socialism, where tax is taken from you. If you don't pay your taxes, you get sent to prison. Yes. If, if I were to refuse to tell it, then if I refuse to go to prison, they would come and get me forcibly. So the money is taken under threat of violence mm. from me, uh, from all taxpayers. This was voluntary, though. Yes. And so it's not communism at all. It's the exact opposite. It's the right wing view that giving, we should love and care for people, but it should be by private charities. 
Yes. Uh, and the other example, what, what would you say about the other example you gave, the Good Samaritan? Yes. What Jesus did, I think, was right. He Nobody could about... condemn the Good Samaritan yeah, for yeah. doing what he did. Yes. Because that was right and that was good. And that was his choice. He could have passed by on the other side. Yeah, he could. It's just interesting that, uh, that, of course, the religious people didn't. They they passed by, but he didn't. He stopped and helped. Now, Mm. when he he stopped and helped, there's also another feature of him. He's quite rich, isn't he, the Samaritan? Yes. He's got money to spare. Yes. In the King James Version, I think he gives a knee (laughs) to the innkeeper. Uh, Times have changed. There's been inflation. That's not worth as much (laughs) anymore. But he gives some money, and he's got means of transport. So what is this is an example of a generous rich person. It's it's almost like uh, telling you about the importance of uh, of this idea of giving. It entails you having the means to give, which is, of course, God blessing you, but God blessing you through your enterprise and work. It also says in the Bible that a worker deserves his wages. Yes. Now, all that to me says that the Bible is teaching against left-wing policies and rather in favour of a, a capitalist approach. You, you own your own money. Didn't this property belong to you before you sold it? Yes, yes, yes it did. So it's, it, it's individual private property rights mm-hmm. and enterprise uh, that here, just in the passages we talked about, being promoted in the Bible. Yes. It's like a, a right-wing capitalist free market economy. Yes, I found that Christians, they're not always rich, but they're always provided for through their own enterprise, if you like. Their values give them the ability to earn money and to be wise and to do the wise thing rather than being than spending all their money and then expecting other people to support them. Interesting. Yes. Norma, what do you think? I like the parable of a talents. That encourages enterprise yeah. and has the very strange thing that the one who had one thing and carefully preserved it and so on had it actually taken away from him and given to the man who was the entrepreneur yeah. who went and did and earned more and so on. And that sort of strikes me as being something that perhaps we could go and tell those people over in Liverpool at the Labour Party conference. Well, yes. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll pop over there later. But the, uh, <laughs> the thing about uh, that is, that particular parable, is that it's often um, seen as just being spiritual, but you could apply it directly, couldn't you? You should use the wealth you have and invest it. One phrase that uh, I find irritating is people say, well, this uh, trickle-down economics doesn't work. And that by trickle-down economics, they mean something like you allow the rich people to be rich and their wealth trickles down to you. No one on the right or no one supporting, for example, tax cuts calls it trickle-down economics. It's a name that seems to be used by the opponents of such things. It's not that it trickles down. It's that if you can earn more, it's aspirational for you to get there. If, rather than that, your money's going to be taken off from you, you're not going to be motivated to get this higher job. I think, though, uh, my personal thing is is, it's like the idea of the the worker deserves the wages or that you should use what you've got and invest it, uh, as in the Bible passage Norman was talking about. It's just fair and right that it's done. If everyone was charged 10% tax, it's just over this. I've mentioned this because in a presidential election, one of the candidates was suggesting that, that everyone is just charged 10%. That is actually fair because it's a percentage. So people getting a higher amount get more money. It's just extraordinary to me that people think that you have to increase the percentage when he gets a higher salary. And then that's fair. It's the opposite of fair, isn't it? I would have said so, yes. <laughs> so if you have to pay, until next April you do, over £150,000 a year in this country to pay 45% tax, obviously just on the money over that amount. You don't pay 45% on all, and everything. But that is, reduces the encouragement of you paying more. But um, the greater problem is it encourages you to find loopholes <laughs> and to not yes. pay the tax. <laughs> Whereas if you just got everyone to pay 15%, you might you know, pick a different percentage, there would be the incentive to just pay it and then everyone knows it there's, the, there's no loopholes because everyone mm-hmm. pays it so i don't get this trying to tax the rich out of the money that they've earned no having been a tax officer oh yes <laughs> yes well there you can give your insight uh, into it i think there could be slightly more wisdom 
than having reduced the lowest rate of tax from 20p in the pound to 19p in the pound <laughs> because it's just difficult to work out. <laughs> oh, so, <laughs> but leave it at 20 because that's a fifth. Yes. Mean, yeah. Yeah. There is something of that. Making it simple and straightforward and honest, it, it, that's good. So when we're talking to a Christian way of running things, we're thinking yeah, yeah the, the right wing or the um, view of free market enterprise and honesty is important. But also you need to be straightforward and clear. It can't be that you can't understand how much tax you have to pay, which I don't. With my, you know, filling in tax returns, yes. which I have to do in my job, is just so irritating. Mm. Although I have not to clear. say that um, Kwasi Kwarteng has appealed for the tax code to be simpler. Well, uh, well, and I he, think that's wise. Well, he's in a position to put in some changes. Let's hope yes. so. So just in summary, the people are talking about a rise in right-wing politics we th- don't think that's necessarily a bad idea but i want to close with one element of it that we haven't covered and yet people think is part of it when they think of right-wing politics they tend to also think of what they would regard as racist attitudes control of the borders so you're right wing and racist that seems to go together now just going back to my previous point that fascism so the nazis were left wing mm-hmm. and they are the ones who uh, exterminated the jews and other people Uh, For example, the Slavs, they would see Russians as Slavs. But right wing and racism doesn't go together, particularly if you talk about the free market right wing policies that we've been talking about, because not only does race not come into it, who you are at all doesn't come into it. You're just free to take part in the economy. Yes, I do notice that this new Tory government does seem to have quite a number of, let's say, members of ethnic minorities in it. Which yeah. is good. Yeah, I mean, if they're the best people for the job, they should get the well, job. Yeah. I noticed that Kwasi Kwarteng himself went to Eton and went to good universities. Yeah, so how do you class him? If you're into this uh, identity politics, he's black, so that yes. means he's from a minority, but he's, as you say, been to all the right universities, so he yes. comes from the elite. So it must be difficult for people who think in terms of identity politics, because yes. where do you place him? Yes, Mm. exactly. So far, he's articulated himself well. He's put forward a high-risk mini-budget, as he called it, not actually a budget. Mm. But, of course, it wasn't actually a budget in that they didn't do the normal analysis of the effects of his policies. Mm. (laughs) So it's a high-risk thing to do. But on the other hand, it's a crisis situation we're in. So maybe he's right. Let's see how he does. But you're right to point out, Roel, that what we've got there is we've got the diversity that's often talked about. Uh, so have. It's more difficult to accuse this government, which has put into place some right-wing economic policies. It's difficult to accuse them of racism, though, isn't it? Yes, definitely. I hope they do well. Uh, oh, yeah. And I hope that their fiscal responsibilities work out. Yes, we hope and pray that they're going to be successful. This is happening around the world, that some more right-wing governments look like they're going to be put into place. In America, it's looking like Donald Trump or uh, someone, how do you refer to them, someone Trumpy? <laughs> if not him himself, we'll get... Populist. Yeah, we'll be in place uh, after him. Maybe it be Ron DeSantis, currently the governor of Florida. And uh, across Western world, there's been a rise of the right wing, or as we would put it, sensible governments, looking like they're going to take over. So maybe looking forward the carolean age the age of which king charles is the king of the uk perhaps that age is going to be one in which we change the way the countries are run for the better pray that it is so 